Good afternoon, fans. This is your girl from Mills Mad Chat, and this is episode 267 of the show. How is everybody doing? Hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving, because I did. Um, it was better than I thought, even though my mother, this was my first Thanksgiving without my mother. I was a rock star when it came to the turkey, so I know how to cook turkey now. Um, hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Um, this week was a little bittersweet. Um, Wednesday was my mother's birthday. She would have been 62 years old. I can't believe it's saying would have been 62 years old, but, um, she is in heaven and she's getting better and she's healing and she's just, she just belongs there because she was in so much pain. Um, there's a lot going on in my personal life, which I'm not going to divulge, but uh, let's just say it's causing me a lot of stress and my health isn't as what it used to be five years ago. I'm progressively getting sicker and sicker and I can't do anything because I got stress, which makes me sicker. Um, we had a really decent Survivor Series, um, better than I was expecting. Um, some of the out the outcomes weren't my cup of tea, but then again, um, it's all for long term working. We are progressively um, going forth for um, AEW. We have a new AEW champion. We have um, lots going on there. Um, there has been two rumors. Two rumors that Eric Young is coming back to WWE because he has um, his deal with impact wrestling has completely gone and he's going to come back to WWE what that's the reporting and what I and on top of it all we might be having the man that made war games and take it in into the modern era here uh back with the company which is William Regal they're saying that it's a three-year contract but he had a uh like a stipulation in it Whatever the case may be, if we get back William Regal, and he's got a lot of other reasons to come back. His son is in NXT. To, I mean, for crazy sakes, he would want to be able to work with his son. What father wouldn't? I mean, look. Look at Dominic. Look at um, when Robbie Brooks died. His daughter, Zia, Zia Brooks, was in. You know, it, it's 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 a great thing to be able to work with your parent, with your kids. And it, and it, enhances your storylines and whatnot and you know if he comes back great mazel tov welcome home but if he doesn't and he stays in AEW that's his choice but there could be other things going on in the background that we don't know of I'm going to put this out Maybe he got released for a reason to go over there to see how it is and then report it back to Triple H. And then that's when he's going to stick the dagger into Tony Khan's heart. And that's going to be the end of AEW. Did you ever think of that? No, this is why you have me. So um, it, this is going to be a really fast go through the major shows and whatnot. But you know what I like to do. You don't let the, I support the stuff that I use and I use Harry's. Visit Harry's for all your shaving and toiletry essentials. You can find them at harrys.com and make sure you get, you start your own subscription and you can get them delivered right to your house. Um, if they have any deals for Harry's, use them. I don't have a coupon code or anything. I don't get paid from this company. I don't get paid from any company. I just am very blessed to um, be allowed to promote them on my show. Please go check out my Astro Classics at my astroclassics.com and get all your beard essentials and they have some righteous merch. I have uh, two t-shirts from them and I love, I love them. So you can find them out at my astroclassics.com. Go and check out Liquid Death at liquiddeath.com and sample their three flavored sparkling waters, which are lime, mango, orange, and mixed berry. Also, you could get this still water and the sparkling original water there as well. Also, please go check out 
Death Wish Coffee at deathwishcoffee.com. I think they're running a sale or a special. that You can get three boxes for under $50. And it's like the um, pumpkin chai, the blueberry, and the gingerbread. So go check them out as well. Go check out HOG at hogwrestling.net. And they're going to be having a their next um, their next event, which is on December seventeenth, and they have two matches that are set to go. Jacob Fatu was putting his HOG World Championship against the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis. Also, please. Also, they're going to have Loki versus um, Kenta from the Bullet Club from New Japan. Um, so go check everything out at hogwrestling.net and get your tickets on the website. If you're in the greater Pennsylvania area, please go check out Outbreak Wrestling and Sanctuary Wrestling. You can find them on all social media outlets. Um, I want to, first and foremost, send out my condolences to the um, James Aldis family. Nikki, uh, Mickey James's um brother and niece have uh, passed away and her sister Laura is clinging to life. We send here our condolences out and we are just praying for you all and I, my heart goes out to your entire family, Mickey and Nick. Hold on, family. So that is that. Let's take it back to last week on Rampage, which was on at 4, 4 p.m., I believe it was. And they did not such a bad rating. I thought it was going to be worse than that, but it is what it is. We're going to also jump right into Raw, then NXT, then Dynamite, because, because uh, SmackDown was on my home, my go home shows and my preview and predictions for Survivor Series War Games. Speaking of that, you can check out the review on my YouTube channel and go check that out. Please remember to like, subscribe, like and subscribe, and go check me out on my all my social media platforms, which are Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, which is Mel's Mat Chat, and go check out my um, Snapchat and Facebook. They were still in, um, they were still in, um, Chicago. So we had the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship match. We have Dax Hardwood and Cash Wheeler, which are the champions of Ring of Honor, against Top Flight Dante Martin and Darius Martin. Dax and Darius lo locked up with Darius taking Dax to the mat. Dax fired back with a shoulder tackle and scoop slam. Dax dropped a leg and a and tagged in Cash. Cash Wheeler clobbered Darius with chops and a European uppercut. Darius used his speed and tagged out to the younger brother. Cash caught Dante with three consecutive shots. Dante got a Line tag to Darius. Top flight hit the next level tandem offense with Darius DDT and Cash for a near fall. Dax and Darius exchanged shots. Cash tagged in, but Top flight hit Stereo Hurricane Ranas to FTR. Cash punted Dante in the spine and then tagged in Dax. Top flight knocked FTR over the top rope with Lariats. Darius flew into FTR with a toe, and then Dante springboarded onto them. Dante nearly scored an upset win with a crossbody off the top turnbuckle to Dax. Dante charged in, trying to fight off both members of FTR. Dax used a slingshot powerbomb on Dante while Cash splashed off the top, but Darius broke it up in a pin attempt. 
Dax while Darius with a brutal F, a brutal lariat. FTR was looking for the big break, but Dante countered with a high stack pin attempt to Dax for a near fall. Darius DDT'd Dax while Dante hit the big splash off the top rope, but Cash broke it up, broke up the pin attempt this time. Look at the hang time that Dante got, said Ian Riccoboni. Darius caught Cash with a Spanish fly, but Dax was there to stop Darius's momentum, blasting Darius with a brain buster. Dax attempted a brain buster to Dante, but Dante countered with a victory roll for a two count. Dante was looking for the no dive, but FTR dodged it and followed up with the big rig for the pin. Colton and Austin Gunn of the Gun Club walked out onto the stage applauding FTR, trying to get under FTR's skin. Could they be the ones to face them at final battle? We'll see. And I'm letting you know that FTR's contracts are coming up. So they're saying that they're going to want to take a year off and let them do what they want and be on their own time. When they get this offer from Triple H, they're going to go back. Guarantee it. And they may because they have the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. That must that might work in because now Carl Anderson. And it's going to be a great thing. And um, I'm going to let a little, little snippet at the end of it. Um, WWE is looking into buying more companies, wrestling companies. And um, they could well afford one other wrestling company. And it could be that. They will be it in Japan. Just to let you know what's going on. And I'm like really stoked about this. This is going to be great. Honestly. My, my, my thing is not working. So I'm going to use my phone to get my rest of my notes because um, That's what I'm looking for. Went up a little too far. Far. Oh, finally, my my tablet is working. Now I just gotta fix this. Okay, cool. Ring of Honor World The Ocho, Chris Jericho with the Jericho Appreciation Society, Angela Parker, Daniel Garcia, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, and Matt Menard. Parker, pipe down Chicago, cool hand has one thing to say, all honor the Ocho. Jericho, is there any doubt that I'm the greatest Ring of Honor champion of all time? Any doubt? I've beaten everybody been thrown my way. I've bled for this title. I've sweat for this title. I've earned this title. I'm the Ocho. Not even Claudio Castanoli came can came come out could come out out on the stage to give me a cheap out. Not even that's how that's going down to slow me down. So my question to everybody, who is going to be the uncrowned king of Ring of Honor? Claudio Castanoli's music came out and he went on to the ramp. Claudio, Chris, you asked if there is any doubt that you are the greatest Ring of Honor champion. There's no doubt in my mind that you are not. I know I can beat you. I've beaten you twice. 
but I started doubting myself when it counts. I came here to be the best professional wrestler that I can be. And I know that I am the best professional wrestler I when I don't doubt myself. I just need to beat you. I have to beat you. Jericho, okay, maybe you should be more worried about the Blackpool Combat Club since they're falling apart at the seams. Claudio, that's not my problem. I can't I can't focus on anything since I've since I lost to you six days ago. It bothers me. I need a shot at the Ring of Honor World Championship. Jericho, so you want another shot at the Ring of Honor World Championship. If you want it, forget it, because there's nothing you have that you have you can offer me. Menard, hold on, maybe there is something he can offer. Maybe there's ju there's just a little something that he can offer all of us. Daddy Magic has an idea. Claudia, you are a hell of a professional wrestler, but let's not forget, there was a time that you were a fantastic sports entertainer. I think you could be an excellent addition to the Jericho Appreciation Society. How about that, Chris? Jericho, I think you're onto something, Daddy Magic. Claudio, dis despite the fact you are you came on stage and whacked me in the face for no reason, I will give you one more chance at the Ring of Honor Championship. But if you lose, you will become a new member of the Jericho Appreciation Society. This is a good... Th I'm At 4 o'clock on December 10th, it's going to be great. Afternoon wrestling, evening wrestling, and it's a great thing. I think it's... If I'm not mistaken, it's, I think, next week. And oh, my God. Shit. Oh, my God. I'm going to be at the Gambit here this that weekend. Anywho. Claudio, you're right. I was a great sports entertainment. I am still am a great sports entertainer. And I would be a tremendous asset to the Jericho Appreciation Society. But I know deep down in my heart, despite all my doubts... I'm an even better professional wrestler. And look at my eyes. Chris, I come final battle. I will throw you around like a little kid and I will beat you for the Ring of Honor Championship. I will bring back honor to this title. Darby Allen versus Anthony Henry. Darby and Anthony lock up, but Anthony got the better of it and kicked Darby right in the spine. Darby tried for a sunset flip, but Henry escaped. Darby rocketed outside the ring and cracked J.D. Drake in the ribs. As Darby was climbing into the ring, Henry dropped Darby over the top rope with a guillotine. Henry sent Darby down hard on the apron with a back heel trip. This is a fight, said Jim Ross. Darby went in, went for the coffin splash, but Anthony Henry, Henry countered with a suplex and then hard with Irish whip. Henry had Darby tied up in the tree of woe and then drop kicked Darby. Henry came out of the corner with a neck breaker on Darby for a near fall. Henry jumped off the top rope, but Darby moved and rocked Henry with a code red for a two count. While the ref was att attention diverted by Henry, J.D. Drake plastered Darby on the outside with a forearm. Sting went sent Drake flying hard into the steel barricade. Henry pointed at Sting and then suplexed Darby. Henry went for another clothesline, but Darby escaped and hit the scorpion death drop. Darby nailed Henry with a coffin drop and pinned Henry. So that was nothing too special. I just, I, I Sting has got to start thinking about like what they need to know what's going to go on with him and Darby Allen, because this cannot end forever. This can't last forever, I mean. Lexi Nair interviews Athena backstage. Athena, look into the camera, look into the camera and address the Ring of Honor World Women's Champion, Mercedes Martinez, asking the champ. Where are you going to put the title on? When are you going to put the title on the line? Because I'm waiting and I'm game. Talking about puns, a puns, a puns, a puns all over the place. Hikaru Shida versus Queen Amatina. Am Amita, sorry. Before the match, Penelope Ford and, Bun and the bunny skipped out onto the ramp. 
They distracted Sheeta, then Queen Ami Amimina ambushed Sheeta. What is the agenda here? wondered Jim Ross. Queen Amanada, I think, I, I'm really bad at with names, ran and used her length to kick Sheeta. Amanita was looking for an air raid crash, but Sheeta countered it for a near fall. Sheeta connected with an elbow strike and then a falcon arrow. Sheeta used the katana and pinned Queen Amamina. That was really qu quick and to the point. Main event time. El Toro Blanco, Rouge, with the Butcher and the Blade versus the Dark Order, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Press Ten, Press Ten Vents. Dark Order made the, their entrance without Ten, as he was nowhere to be found. Blade and Reynolds began the ring, began in the ring for their respective teams, while Roosh and Butcher double teamed Silver on the outside. Butch chopped at Reynolds, knocking him off his feet. Lee tagged in, and then Silver cleaned house. Silver attempted a tope, but Butcher caught him, and then Roosh was right there with an elbow strike to Silver. Roosh grabbed a cable outside on the ring on Silver. Roosh threw Silver into the ring where Butcher, Butcher continued the beatdown. Silver tried for a tag, but Blade pulled Reynolds off the apron, preventing the tag. Blade clubbed Silver with a lariat. John Silver flew, f mounted some offense on Butcher, and the Blade... Silver crawled for a tag, but Roosh prevented Silver from making the tag again, knocking Reynolds off the apron. Evil Uno and Negative One appeared on the stage, motioning for Ten to get in the ring to help his friends in the Dark Order. Ten sprinted to the ring. Where has he been? asked Jim Ross. Ten slid in the ring and got into Rush's face. Ten blindsided John Silver with a shot. Butcher and the Blade swarmed Evil Uno outside and the Outside the ring, Roosh ran across the ring and nailed Silver with the bull horns. Roosh covered Silver and pinned him. What a shocking development, said Jim Ross. Ten rocketed Reynolds with the discus lariat. Ten and Roosh tore the mask off of Evil Uno, adding insult to injury. Ten and Roosh choked Slam Reynolds off the apron and through the timekeeper's table. Ten walked up the ramp to negative one and then threw his mask at negative one. Speaking of negative one, um, I think he's, I think he's got a little competition earlier this week. Um, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae brought their son Quill Gargano with them to work and Triple H got to, um, you know, do the finger pointing thing. And I think we may be seeing the, true youngest wrestling superstar and who knows he might be working for aurora levique levac sorry but that's all kidding aside you know uh let's go right to dynamite and then we're going to backtrack on wwe give them a little bit of um a little bit of um what is it called spotlight because they usually do wwe right off the bat so i want to do AEW today. Give them a little love, you know? So I'm possibly, you know, we could be having that and I would love to see that, you know? This is ridiculous. All right. I don't want Rampage. I already did Rampage from last week. Oh, you got my Yida.
That's what I'm looking for. I don't know why my my tablet is so slow. I don't have slow internet. It's just this is slow. All right. Dynamite was coming from the Indiana Farms Coliseum in Indianapolis, Indiana. We start off the show with three-time former AEW World Champion John Moxley. John, you know I grew up about 90 miles from here. When I first started, I wrestled here all the time in the Salvation Army gym. That was a long time ago. This has been a crazy-ass ride. You never know what's around the corner, but there's... There are three constants in this world. Death, taxes, and John Moxley. There, there's nobody that can outwork me, work me, out hustle me, out wrestle me, out bleed me, or out sweat me. I'm at the top of the food chain. I do what I want. I say what I want. This AEW ring belongs to me. And you could bet your ass there is not a man in this building that has the balls enough to come out here and look me in the eyes and tell me any different. Hangman Adam Page music hits. And he goes to the ring and confronts John Moxley. Adam Page got right in Moxley's face and they had a stare down. Moxley, you sure you want to do this, man? After what happened last time and because he grabbed his head and... It's referencing him giving him a concussion. Oh, I'm sorry to do you not remember. Last time, Hangman decked Moxley with a big right hand. Moxley and Hangman crashing into the barricade. Security ran down to pry Moxley off of page. So there was a big brawl, basically. And it was even in the uh, garage. So then we go right into the Blackpool Combat Club, American Dragon Brian Danielson versus Dax Hardwood from the FTR. Da uh, Danielson took Dax down with a side headlock takeover. Dax countered with a front headlock. Danielson went for a big high kick, but Dax ducked it. Dax was looking for a sharpshooter, but Danielson grabbed the ropes to force the break. Dax stomped on the sides of Brian's head. Dax and Brian traded chops. Dax jumped off the turnbuckles with a cross body press for a near fall. Dax was flipped over the top rope, and the Danielson rocketed at him with a tope suicida, knocking Dax over the guardrail onto the front row of fans. Hardwood went for a pile driver, but Danielson blocked it with a back body drop. Danielson missed a roundhouse kick, and Dax spiked Danielson for a near fall. Dax missed a diving headbutt from the top, and Danielson rolled up Dax for a two count. Danielson rocked Dax with a diving knee smile to the arena floor. Dax pulled Danielson onto the top turnbuckles, but Danielson slipped and shoved Dax with a with Dax crotching himself on the top turnbuckle. Danielson followed up with a hammer and anvil elbows. Danielson suplexed Dax off the top turnbuckle and Dax switched so Dax's body landed on top. Danielson and Hardwood traded shots in the center of the ring. Dax clocked Brian with a lariat, but Brian followed up with a clubbing shot of his own. The fans chant, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. Danielson went for a kick, but Hardwood intercepted it. Dax attempted the slingshot powerbomb, but Danielson escaped by countering with a Hurricane Rana. Danielson blasted Dax with a roundhouse kick. Kicks. Dax countered a running knee strike with a slingshot Liger bomb. After countering another cradle pin, Danielson puts Dax in the label lock and Dax was forced to tap out. That was a hell of a match by those two men, said Taz. Tony Schiavone was backstage with absolute Ricky Starks. Starks, I would like to make an announcement. I'm entering myself in the battle royal that will take place next week. I'm going to win it because I'm coming for everything you have, Max. 
I'm coming for your spot, everything that you have. Guess what? I'm owed that as well. Cameras caught up with Hangman, Adam Page, and Mox were still brawling. Huh. What else is new? Renee Pequette was live satellite in Nashville with the Jericho Appreciation Society and Claudio Castanoli and Wheeler Yuta. Claudio, I need to beat Jericho at final battle. Wheeler Yuta, at final battle, you put your pure title on the line, Garcia. Garcia, okay. So we have a TNT Open Challenge. TNT and Ring of Honor champion Samoa Joe versus A.R. Fox. He just signed and he's all elite. Samoa Joe cornered A.R. Fox and boxed him into the turnbuckles with jabs. Joe headbutted A.R. Fox. Samoa Joe moved for in for clotheslines, but A.R. Fox, Fox ducked it. For pump kicked Samoa Joe outside the ring. Back in the ring, Samoa squashed A.R. Fox with a sit-down senton. Samoa dro Joe drove Fox to the mat with a side slam for a near fall. Joe met A.R. Fox on the top turnbuckle, but Fox showed him down, shoved him down, and nailed Samoa Joe with a DDT and then a short cutter. Fox smashed Joe with a 450 splash for a near fall. A.R. Fox jumped on the top rope, but Samoa Joe walked out of the way. Samoa landed a muscle buster on A.R. Fox for the pin and the win. Fox put up a hell of a fight, said Taz. Samoa Joe, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to welcome you to the new and glorious era for I am the one true king of television. And somewhere in Stanford, Connecticut is Triple H just beaming with pride. Because you know for a fact that Samoa Joe will always be a Triple H guy, no matter where he is. Samoa uh, Warlord comes up on the screen. Warlord, Warlow, I hope you enjoy playing the role because I'm coming for what's mine. This is Warlow's word. World. William Regal walked to the ring. Regal, ladies and gentlemen, your new AEW world champion, Maxwell Jacob Freeman. So we have him come into the ring, which this was fucking great. This was fantastic. MJF hugged Regal in the ring. MJF, you know people aren't very bright, but when the best wrestler on God's green earth is holding the microphone, you are... You keep your hillbilly mouth shut. I like to tell you how our own Holy Union came to be. Right after the firm attacked me, Regal sent me an email. Email. It said, Maxwell, I see the potential you becoming the greatest villain of all time. This time, I don't grab the diamond ring. You must grab the brass ring. Joe, play on words. Because I'm telling you, sh shit, if fucking goddamn... Triple H at, at 2024 offers this guy like $4 million a year for the next five years. He's becoming a Triple H guy. He's already a Triple H guy, but he will become a Triple H guy. He like He'll be like signing, the, signing his fucking table just to get over there. Seriously, if Triple H offered him a blind check 2024, he's gone. We met behind closed doors, and you could say this man is a genius. He told me to use the brass knucks. He didn't just want me to beat John Moxley. He wanted me to leave Moxley with an emotional scar so he wouldn't forget the day he outsmarted by MJF. Now let's talk about the firm. I kind of respect the firm. They saw a weakness in me, and I like sharks smelling blood in the water. They attacked. They attacked. I could have done the same thing even if I har harbored resent. I couldn't, I should, bleh. I wouldn't go after them because it takes, a f it takes effort. I'm above that. Speaking of things, of things, I'm above, let's talk about this belt. When I became the AEW world champion, I promised I would make changes around here. Out with the old and in with the new. I look at this title. I see something that needs an upgrade. It's tacky, it's ugly, and it reminds me of the people who held the belt before me. This version of the title, much like 
all of you is garbage. Mr. Eagle, if you don't mind, MJF threw the, the original belt down and grabbed the new one. Let me introduce to you to the Triple B, the big burgundy belt. This is now the most important, most prestigious title of all of professional wrestling. And all of and all because I'm the man holding it. No one, and I mean no one, deserves to be recognized as world champion except for me. Not any pieces of trash you guys push for. Not fake guys like Eddie Kingston. Fake guys like Ricky Starks and the worst of the worst fake wrestlers like Brian Danielson. No offense, compare no offense in comparison to me. Brian Danielson could wrestle his way of, out of a paper bag. Mister Regal, you tried everything you could, but some people can't be helped. Speaking of people who can't be helped, there is a message for everybody on my show. As long as I'm in this company. You will never know what it's like to be on top all the way until the bidding war of 2024 when I will use Triple B as a bargaining chip. If I'm completely honest and transparent, come January 2024, I don't even know if a wrestling company wins the war because I'm getting sick at looking at wrestling fans on a weekly basis. Maybe holiday... Maybe Hollywood wins, but I'm not dead. Deaf. I know there's interesting amount of you who were over the moon when I became champion. But just call me mystical Max because I predict you people are fickle. Because soon pe enough you will be you will say I'm boring. I never wrestle. I always talk. He's cons constantly making. Make, makes his opponents jump through hoops. And to those people, I say, great. But you people will tune in every week. Triple B will be defended very rarely. I will wrestle very rarely because I'm special attraction. To see my wrestle, my wrestle nine times out of ten, you'll have you'll have to reach your into your pockets and pay money for the pay per view. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in the era of MJF. Oh, I forgot most. Mr. Eagle, I wanted to say, without these brass nuts, none of this would be possible. For 40 years, you've given blood, sweat, and tears for this business. And that's why I want to say, from the bottom of my heart, MJF blindsided Regal, clocking him with the brass nuts from behind. You said I had too much, too much to learn. You made a deal with the devil. Brian Danielson sprinted to the ring to check on Regal. William Regal was stretched out. Now, there was, clearly there was a part that, that was missing. He said, I what, can't wait to do business or if, if this bidding war is going to take me other places. You know, my best friend, Khan, not Tony, jolly old St. Nick and Trips. I mean, Come on, come on. MJF will fit right in with Triple H, Stephanie, and Tony Khan knows this. Tony Khan knows this. And he's going to have to do everything in his power to basically, basically he's going to have to go get a loan from his father. Moving on to absolute Ricky Starks. Versus the truth buster, Arya Davari. Stokely Hathaway and all ego Ethan Page came out right before the match. They sent Matt Hardy to the back. And Page told Starts that Page is going to win at Winter is Coming. Ari ambushed Starks, but Starks retaliated with the Rochambeau and pinned Arya Davari. Willow Nightingale versus Jericho Appreciation Society. Anna J A S. Willow knocked down Anna with the shoulder tackle. She followed up with a short arm lariat. Willow used a crossbody for a near fall on our Anna J. Tay Mello was in the corner trying to motivate Anna J. Anna kicked Willow in the back. Anna J fired back with a 
flipping neck breaker. Anna locked in the Queen Slayer, but Willow slammed backwards to counter it. Taymello jumped on the apron to distract Willow. Anna grabbed Willow and rolled her up for a near fall. Willow clocked Anna with a lariat and then finished Anna off with a Dr. Bomb for the pen. Ruby Soho's music played. Ruby appeared in the ring Tay behind Tay. Ruby and Tay began to brawl, but Tay got rocked with a headbutt Ruby from Ruby. Ruby smashed Tay with the detonation unknown on the ring round. We What a return, Ruby Soho, said Excalibur. Backstage, QT Marshall challenges All-Atlantic champion Orange Cassidy to a Lumberjack match on Rampage this Friday. Whoopty fucking do Next time for... Next, it was time for the eight, a TNT Championship celebration with Jake Hardgill and the baddies. Red Velvet and Layla Gray. Jay said she was done playing games with the baddies. Jade... You either get in line or you can step because you two are eating off of me. And this entire company is e eating off of me. I'm the brightest star in the company. Has Nobody has my body, my face, and my aura. I am the real deal and nothing but real. I, created, I create careers and little Bow Wow is a joke, a total joke. Bow Wow appeared on the screen and he's fixated on Jake. So nobody has the the body that she does. Um, yeah, I know two people, and they're not even in that company. Number three, eating off of her. Uh, if she was in the main event, and I know she was in the main event, I wouldn't be buying her ticket. She doesn't put asses in seats, okay? And if you really are great, wrestle every fucking week. Wrestle every week. The TBS championship is being held by you. You're a champion. Act like it. AEW World Trios Championship. Best of seven. Death Triangle versus the Elite. It, the Death Triangle starts the night at 2, two and 0. Oh. The Elite charged up the ramp as Death Triangle ma tried to make their entrance. Matt Jackson dropped Penta El Zeno Miano on the ramp. Omega took down Pac, landing hard on his hip. The Bucks and Pac at the bottom of the ramp. Omega sprinted down for the V-trigger, but Pac countered it with a thrust kick. The Bucks were wiped out by cutters from the Lucha Bros. The match officially began. The Bucks powerbombed the Lucha Brothers on the ring apron. Matt Jackson accidentally took out Ref Rick Knox on a dive. Penta El Zeno Mieno flipped over the top rope and crashed onto the elite. Penta El Zeno Mieno had a hammer from Pac. Ray Phoenix grabbed the hammer, but Kenny Omega charged in with a V-trigger, blasting Phoenix. Uh, speaking of the V-trigger, somebody from NXT thinks that Mandy Rose does a better one. Uh, no, no, please, no. Please get your head examined, please. Omega power bombed El Penta El Zeno Mieno. Death Triangle fire backed on fire backed on all cylinders with thrust kicks to the elite. Penta El Zeno Mieno spiked Omega with a fear factor for a near fall. A nail biter indeed, said Excalibur. The Bucks and Lucha. Brothers traded kicks in the ring. Matt Jackson suplexed the Lucha Brothers by himself. Pac charged at Kenny with a running boot. Omega and Pac did the battle on the ropes. Pac used his mask to headbutt Omega. Pat nailed Omega with an avalanche falcon arrow for a near fall. Nick landed a super kick on Ray Phoenix and, the, and a cutter on, for a near fall. The Bucks were about to go for the Melter Driver, but Ray escaped. Instead of the Bucks managed to hit more more for your bang. 
buck. Oh, sorry, more for your buck. Oh, sorry, wait a second. More bang for your buck. Oh my God, my eyes are like terrible today. But Penta, Elzina, Miana were there to break up the pin. The Bucks grabbed Ray Phoenix for the BT trigger, but Pac and Penta broke it up with thrust kick. Ken Kenny Omega ate a cutter from Ray Phoenix. The Lucha Brothers hit the fear factor on that. Jackson, Pac charged in and smashed Matt with a brain buster for a near fall. The, f the fans are standing everywhere. They are not sitting down, said Tony Schiavone. Pac went for a black arrow finisher, but Matt raised his knees into Pac's face and managed to pin Pac. The next series will take place in two weeks on Dynamite. Winter is coming. So that is that. Now on to Raw. Monday Night Raw. So um, Becky Lynch started the show. Becky Lynch's music hits and she makes her way to the ring. She starts saying it's good to be back on Monday Night Raw. She says she misses the audience. She said she, that she should be, be out in the crowd with the people and proceeds to go to the crowd. She greets the members of the WWE Universe. She asks the fan, a fan his name. She says that he, returning at war games was the most brutal way to return. She then says she's ready to put her body on the line. She said there's a lot of business to take care of. She continues that a lot of new faces have come in and she can't wait to slap every one of them. Damage control music hits and Bailey comes out with a mic. Bailey starts by saying she brought thought Becky return is return and is feeling humble. She then asks the crowd to shut up. She continues to say that she has been putting her body on the line. She says she just gets no respect after everything she has done for the last four months. She criticizes the crowd. Becky then asks not to insult the fans. Becky then Be Becky says that the crowd doesn't appreciate her because she's a loser. She then says they could fight they could fight now if she wants. Dakota Kai and Io Sky appear from behind. Becky goes to fight them. All the women brawl in the crowd. It's a three on one attack as Becky tries to fight off damage control. She slams Bailey's face into the ground. Security and officials come out to separate them. Basically they were in the concourse area where the like the um the souvenir stands, the concession stands, and whatnot. So it was great to see that. We haven't seen that in a while, which is great. Rhea Ripley versus Mia Yim. Rhea Ripley, they, Rhea Ripley comes out, and he's, she's with Dominic Mysterio. And Mia comes out, and the match starts with Mia gaining the upper hand with a couple of arm drags. Rhea trips Mia and attacks her in the corner. Mia applies the tarantula on Ripley and trips her. Dominic distracts Mia, but not enough as Yim continues to attack Ripley. Ripley fights back with a clothesline. Rhea continues to attack Mia Yim. Rhea hits a suplex on Mia Yim. Cover one, two, kick out. Rhea goes to work on Yim. Mia fights back with vicious attacks. She hits a drop kick. Yim sends to the apron, but Mia hits the tornado DDT, cover one-two kick out. Rhea goes for a uh, riptide, but Mia 
counters with a DDT as Rhea rolls out of the ring. Dominic distracts Mia again. She pulls him aside inside the ring. This allows Rhea to attack him from behind. AJ Styles runs out to attack Dominic as the referee calls from the bell. The rest of Judgment Day and OC come out and the two groups brawl. The first hour of Raw was commercial free. So this is, was a great first hour. It was just good. It was like, wow, an hour has gone by. That is qu not how quick. It was actually enjoy enjoyable, this whole thing. So AJ gets back on the mic and asks, where are you going? Where are they going? They, he says he thought it was over at Survivor Series, but it's going to end tonight and challenges them to a 4 and 4 match. There was no mention of a mixed tag. Judge Day, Judgment Day runs in the ring. Both factions brawl, dives onto the onto Balor on the outside. Dominic chucked into the crowd. Mia sent Rhea into the steel steps. Styles sends Balor into the ring, and we begin the match. Balor hits a drop kick in st on Styles. He goes for a suplex, but Styles counters it into a suplex followed by a backbreaker. He tags in Anderson and continues to attack Balor before tagging in Gallows. Gallows hits the suplex cover one two kick out. He tags in Anderson who attacks Balor before tagging in Styles. He attacks Balor and tags in Gallows. But Balor escapes and tags in Priest who attacks Gallows. Both men trade blows. Gallows hits a flapjack and attacks Priest in the corner. Priest with a heel kick he tags in Balor, who attacks Gallows, and tags in Dominic, who goes, go, who does the same, does the same, and tags in Balor. He tags in Priest, who kicks Gallows, cover one, two, kick out. Gallows tags in Anderson, who attacks Priest. Anderson hits a spine buster on Dominic. He the, the distraction allows Priest to hit a hit the clothesline, one, two, kick out. Priest works Anderson. Anderson fights back, but is stopped by Priest. Balor tags in and attacks Anderson. He tags in Priest, who hits a leg drop. One, two, cover, one, two, kick out. Priest tags in Rhea, who attacks Anderson. She tags in Dominic, and the group exchange tags. Balor continues to work Anderson. Anderson hits the neckbreaker, tags in Dominic, and continues to attack Carl. He hits the three amigos, one, two, kick, cover, one, two, kick out. He takes in Balor, who kicks Anderson. Balor continues to work on Carl. Balor plants Anderson, cover, one, two, kick out. One, two, Styles makes the save, sorry. Anderson with a back suplex. He tags in Styles, who attacks Balor. Gallows makes, Gallows takes out Priest on the outside. Styles kicks out Dominic. Styles hits a moonsault DDT cover one two kick out. The one two Rhea makes the save. Sorry, she goes to kick Styles but rolls up but couldn't get the win. Balor hits a sling blade. Both men tag out. Mia attacks Rhea with a drop kick and a flapjack. Mia hits a cannonball sending Rhea outside. Mia hits a suicide dive. The OC. And the Judgment Day brawl in the ring. Styles with a phenomenal forearm, but is sent outside. But Balor, outside, but Balor, Yim body slams Balor, then attacks Dominic. Ripley attacks from behind and hits a riptide for the win. The winner is Judgment Day. Yeah, I was so happy. <laughs> the Usos theme song hits, and they walked out to the ring with Sammy and Solo Sequoia. Jimmy grabs the mic and says the bloodline is here. Jay says they went to war at war games. He says they were left standing tall. Jimmy continues to say that there was no cracks in the bloodline. He said that Owens is mad because Zayn is their dog. Dog, whatever. Zayn says that Jimmy has always been his, been his side since day one. He says that last six months weren't easy. He then says that at War Games, the way that Jay accepted him into the family and the way they that they that Jay embraced him after the match was Usy. 
he says the bloodline business that they have to handle. They are on the same page and extends his arm to Jay. They both hug it out. Three of them hug and they ask Solo to get in and hug. They're trying to break this guy. He's the last one to be broken. Kevin Owens' music hits and he comes out with a mic. Sabby asks him to stop at the ramp. He then says that before Owens tries to fight him, but Owens interrupts and says they're not says that's not why he's out here. He said he says that he came to tell Sammy he gets it and understands why Sammy did what he did. He then says he had turned on Sammy multiple times and he isn't mad about it. He said it, it isn't there. He says he isn't there to fight Zane. He says that for 20 years, their careers have been linked together. He says that after Saturday, he is done with Sammy. Zane says that's fine because he feels the exact same way. And he's okay if he never in the same room as Owen. He says He's done. He doesn't need Owens anymore. Very, what, listen to what, listen to these promos week by week that it goes on. Owens says he's happy for Sammy because now everyone can see how great Zayn is. He tells Sammy that it, it doesn't matter how many times he calls them family. Sammy is not their real blood. Jay says Owen is mad. Owens is mad because he doesn't have any family. Jay says that if he has a problem with Zane, he has a problem with Jay. Owen said he isn't done with Jay and will kick his ass any day of the week. He challenges Jay to a match later on in the night. Jay accepts Owen's challenge. Candice LeRae is shown backstage. She is interviewed by Kathy Kelly. Candice says she hasn't been on Raw for long, but Damage Control attacked her, but doesn't. she doesn't know she's... She then says that she will take Dakota Kai out tonight. Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. The Street Pro they both teams go to the ring. Byron Sackton interviews Riddle and Elias. asks what they like teaming with. What's it like teaming with Riddle? No, sorry. What's it like teaming with Elias? Sorry, Riddle says it's been amazing. Elias says he sees himself as a sol solo artist, but it, they make a good team. Riddle suggests they go after the tag titles. Elias says he has never won gold in WWE. The Uso says they will never beat them. Uh, that's wrong because of the 24-7 championship. That's wrong. The Uso's say they'll never beat them. Elias challenges them for the titles. The match begins with Ford in control with a wrist lock. Gable trips Ford and works him. He tags Otis who attacks Montez. Gable tags in but is taken down by Ford. Dawkins tags in and knocks down Gable. Dawkins hits a hits the drop kick, cover one two kick out. He tags in Ford who hits a clothesline. Otis and Gable sent out of the ring. The Street Profits dive onto them. Gable goes to work on Ford. Ford with a roll-up, but referee is distracted by Otis. Gable attacks Ford's throat. Gable hits a Northern Light suplex. Cover one, two, kick out. Ford fights back with a DDT. He tags in Otis. Otis runs into the post. Both men tag out. Dawkins with a back elbow and an insecurity. Cover one, two, kick out. No, sorry. Cover once you were saved by Otis. A kick for Otis. Dragon screwed, screwed by Gable. He hits the German suplex. Cover once you were saved by Montez. Ford. Ford body slammed Otis. Dawkins tags in his partner and hits a spine buster as Ford hits a hits the frog splash for the win. Winners street profits. Austin Theory is shown backstage walking towards the ring. We come back from commercial. Austin, Austin Theory comes out and he heads to the ring. He gets on the mic 
and begins asking, who's the kid now? He says that everyone wants to hold him down, but it won't change the fact that people criticized his cashing. Then he says he doesn't want to ever be called kid again after Survivor Series. He then says he is a two-time U.S. champion. He said he's not longer, says he's no longer the next big thing. He's He has arrived and he's the face of Monday Night Raw. He continues that he has been th thinking everyone has a problem with him and that is because of jealousy. He says he's the he's younger, stronger, better, and the Aust and the Austin theory era begins now. Seth Rollins theme song plays and he walks out to the ring. He asks Theory to shut up and let the crowd sing. Now, that outfit. Let me take a drink because I'm going to be. Was compared to that he was wearing to Nikki Bella. I do not know how Becky Lynch could say, oh, yeah, that's a really cool outfit. I think you should wear that on Monday Night Raw. I mean, come on now, please give me a break. Theory asks what happens when someone so far ahead of everyone in the industry makes the once upon a time future look like the past. Seth says Theory may luck his way into the title on Sunday, but he knows that Monday nights belong to him. Rollins congratulations, congratulates Theory and calls him a kid. He asks if Theory wants to fight him and says they don't have to wait. He asks Theory for his best shot. Theory says he'll fight him on his time, and he says it, he is not Seth's kid before walking away. We go to the commercial. We have Miz interviewing by Byron Saxon, who's carrying a bag of money. He says he, that he injured his hand. and Pierce asks him to stop and says the match will take place. Miz agrees to compete against Dexter. He threatens to sue Adam Pierce. Dexter Loomis versus The Miz. If, the, if Dexter wins, he gets a WWE contract plus the money that he was promised by The Miz. If he doesn't win, he, no, he will not have a contract. So basically, this was a freaking, the um, the outcome was predictable. Dexter Loomis goes out to the to the ring as well as the, the Miz. The Miz approaches the ring but is attacked by Loomis. He gets in the ring, and but the Miz hits a DDT. Dexter stares Miz. He starts attacking Miz, who rolls out of the ring. Loomis attacks Miz on the apron. Loomis sends the Miz into the barricade. He sets Miz on the announcer's desk. The Miz goes for a skull-crushing finale, but is thrown into the barricade. We come back from commercial. The Miz tries to crush. The Miz tries to crush Mrs. Skull, but um, Loomis' skull, but no effect. Loomis hits a spinebuster. Loomis hits Miz in the. Loomis starts Miz into the crowd. Miz slams Dexter into the barricade. Loomis fights back and sends Miz into the television, to a television before placing him on the table. Loomis hits the elbow drop on Miz. Loomis sends Miz back into the ring. Miz exposes the turnbuckle and sends Loomis into it, rolls him up, but doesn't get a pinfall. Loomis kips up, slams, and applies the vice in as the Miz taps out. So when he was crushing the Miz, when the when Miz was crushing Loomis's skull, he used a fucking clamp. I was like, I would have loved to have found real I would have loved to know where they found that to use. Crazy. Following the match, he signs a WWE raw contract. Loomis distributes the money. The Miz attacks him in from behind. He takes back the money, however, Johnny Gargano super kicks him and takes the note and gives it back to the kid in the audience. But I heard it, it was real money. Dakota Kai versus Candice LeRae. Both of them head to the ring and we come back from commercial and Can 
Dakota Kai is working on Candace LeRae while EO and Bailey are being escorted to the back. Kai with vicious with vicious kicks to Candace. She sends Candace out of the ring. Candace gets back in, but Kai continues the assault. Candace fights back, but not enough as Kai kicks her in the face. Kai sent to the apron. She kicks Candace and attempts the suplex, but stopped. Kai planted on the apron. Candace climbed to the top rope and hits a drop kick. Cover one, two, kick out. Kai rolls out of the ring. Candace goes for a dive, but is caught with a kick from Kai. Come back from commercial. Kai is vicious kicks. is caught with a couple of strikes. Candace slams Kai. Cover one, two, kick out. Candace goes for a senton, but misses. Lorraine clean, climbs the second rope and dives, but caught is but is caught with a kick from Kai. Kai with a boot in the corner. She goes for a kick and misses roll roll up, but no pinfall. Candace with a kick. She goes for a moon soul, but misses. Both women trade strikes. Kai hits the scorpion kick. She sets up Candace on the top rope, but Candace hits the swinging neck breaker for the win. Candace wins. Jay Uso showing Mormon up for his match against Kevin Owens. We come back from commercial. Kathy Kelly is interviewing Asuka, Bliss, and Belair. Belair says he, he, she has been a lot better and glad this is over with. She says she held the division down, and she she is happy with her team. Asuka said something in Japanese. Bliss remains silent, but Bianca was right. Kevin Owens versus Jay Uso. The match begins with Owens attacking Jay. Jay fights back, but not enough to stop Owens. Owens knocks down Jay, who rolls outside the ring. Owens goes after him and sends him into the barricade. He then hits a senton. Owens sends Jay into the ring. Jay fights back with a kick to the head of Owens. We'll go to commercial break. Owens takes down Jay and attacks him. Owens hits a DDT cover one to kick out. He climbs the top rope and goes for the swanton. Jay gets his knees up and then hits the neck breaker cover one to kick out. Jay attacks Owens. Jay Jay with vicious Irish whip into the corner. Jay continues to work with Kevin Owens. Owens fights back with a clothesline and a cannibal. Both men exchange strikes. Jay sends Owens into the corner. Cover one, two, kick out. Jay hits a hip attack. We go to commercial. Jay hits a net breaker and starts punching Owens. Jay attacks him in the corner. Owens fights back with a clothesline. He climbs up the top rope, but is stopped. Owens hits a fisherman suplex. He climbs to the top and hits the frog splash. Cover one, two, kick out. Jay super kicks Owens. He super kicks him again. Covers one, two, kick out. Owens attempts the stunner, but Jay hits the super kick. Cover one, two, kick out. Owens with a super kick and goes for the pop-up power bomb, but couldn't hit the move. And Jay hits the super kick. Cover one, two, kick out. Jimmy distracts Owens as the referee busy with Jay. Sequoia chips Owens. Jay attempts the splash, but Owens moves out of the way and hits the stunner for the win. Winner Kevin Owens. Following the match, Owens runs out to the ring to runs out of the ring to evade the bloodline beatdown. And that was the end of Monday Night Raw. So that is that. And now I'm going to give you a quick synapse of um, NXT. Excuse me. I'm just looking. Um, quick note, 
they have announced the participants, but one on each of the matches for the survivor match that is going to be taking place at deadline. They will be, um, hashed out in matches this coming week. And the, the Hall of Fame people that were deciding this was Molly Holly, Alundra Blaze, Shawn Michaels, Road Dog, and X-Pac. I can't believe. Just to hire X-Pac. And then if, <laughs> I cannot believe DX is running WWE. Who would have thunk? Roxanne Perez defeated Indy Hartwell. Dijak made his returned to NXT, and he defeated Dante Chen. Grayson Waller defeated Duke Hudson. Kayana James defeated Fallon Henley. Axiom defeated Javier Barnell. Julius Creed defeated J.D. McDonough. Von Wagner defeated Mala Bra Malik Blade. Toxic Attraction defeated Nikita Lyons. And Katie Carter and Katana Chance. So that is that. That is that. Let me see if I can get any, um, I, which I should have wrote down or typed it in or whatever the case may be. It should have been, you know, it is what it is. Shit. Shows. Shows. Whoops, sorry. Hopefully I don't get a uh, strike on that when I upload the video. Jesus. And this match will have five superstars will compete in this unique 25-minute match. They will battle each other and each other and the clock. Two superstars will start the match and every five minutes a new superstar will enter the match until all five are in the ring. The goal is to have most falls. The clock hits 25 minutes. Falls can be won at any time via pinfall submission or disqualification. When a superstar scores a fall, they will earn a one point. However, they when a superstar loses a fall, that superstar must pay the penalty. They are forced out of the ring into a penalty box for 90 seconds. Once 90 seconds are up, the superstars can re-enter the match. The superstar who has scored the most folds when the clock hits 25 minutes will be named the Iron Survivor and become number one contender to the NXT Championship and the NXT Women's Championship, championship respectfully. The men have been announced. Carmelo Hayes, J.D. McDonough, Grayson Waller, and Joe Gacy. The women are as follow. Roxanne Perez, Cora Jade, Zoe Starks, and Kiana James. So that is that. Um, I will be repeating the rules and stuff on the preview and prediction, which I don't know what I'm doing because they ha they're having stories on AEW. I don't know if I'm going to do it that way like they normally would do i just want to get up to december 10th which is i don't even know yep it's ne it's next weekend okay whatever so um that is that that is that but i remembered what i wwe has been reportedly wanting to buy more wrestling companies yep they're out they're out for blood now they're out for blood they have been in in Latin America, which is like Mexico and down there. They've also been over in Japan. I'm actually going to go and I'm going to Google how much is New Japan worth. Let's see. 
How much is New Japan Pro Wrestling worth? Here is information from Wikipedia. So it's 5.4 billion yen, and that was as of um, 2019. Convert 5.4 billion yen into dollars. 5 billion 400 million Japanese yen equals 40 million 106,000. 40 million dollars. They can offer them $100 million. WWE will own New Japan and everything. Could you imagine possibly WWE owning New Japan after all this? I would love it. Wrestle Kingdom 17. Fucking uh, Triple H walks in. Business-like and whatnot. Gets in the ring and, and says, We want to announce that WWE has bought... New Japan. That would shock the world. I'm going to give you more on that as time goes on. I'm going to keep digging into this. It's maybe a thing, maybe not a thing. And I want to say I apologize for the uh, bell that has gone off. I apologize. So I'm going to end this right now. You know what I like to promote. I'm not going to get into it because I want to get it off so you don't have to listen to this. Um, and I want you to have a great Friday. Remember social media. Follow me on TikTok. Instagram and uh, Twitter, Mel's Match Hat, Facebook, and Snapchat. Please go check that me over there. I will see you next week at 2 p.m. Hopefully, if not, whenever the upload goes up. I will um, for two, episode 268, all right? Have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next week. Love you all.